I'm sitting here with Ruth, Ruth Prestwood, my great grandmother, Gummy, and we are sitting in her living room. And her living room has a bunch of pictures of her kids and her grandkids and her great grandkids. And she has, you can look straight out her window and you can see the front of her house and outside of everything. And you, she has a bunch of toys from where she's babysat, and she has a bunch of angels, and she has a rocking chair. So, Gummy, thank you for joining me today to interview you. So, would you please tell me what your childhood was like? Well, I was born in Hudson, January 12th, 1927, and my mom was uh, Emma Teeters Calvert and my dad was Dewey Calvert and we lived in a a little house well it's rather it's below Hudson really and uh, we didn't have many conveniences like we do now we had to heat with wood stoves and mom cooked on a wood stove and later she got an oil stove and uh, we had a good childhood. We didn't have too much, but we had a good childhood. My mom and dad both worked in the cotton mill, and uh, dad did extra work to make extra money to keep us going. And there was uh, five of us children. I was the youngest, and we, I had uh, two brothers and two sisters, and we all went to the same school, and every grade was in the same school building and uh, um did you have any pets oh yes i always kept a little kitty cat uh, uh, we called them marmalade cats the orange striped ones i always kept one of those for years and then i had a little flock of bantam chickens little golden sea brights and uh, I enjoyed looking after them. My dad got them for me from a man he worked with. And uh, I had a really good childhood. Okay, well what schools did you go to? I went to Hudson School. Like I said, every grade was in the same building. And uh, I, I started in, uh, I got to start early to, uh, it was first grade, we didn't have kindergarten then. So I had got to start early in the first grade because my principal's daughter was five years old and he wanted to start her and he couldn't start her unless I got to go. So both of us got to start a year early in the first grade and I went through the uh, 11th grade in the Hudson schools. And uh, But after we finished the 11th grade, the next year it started 12th grades. And of course later on they added on kindergarten. But uh, I didn't go to school after I finished high school. I didn't get to go to college, but I think I would have loved to have gone on and done some kind of a business course, but uh, my parents couldn't afford that to send us all to school. So I went to work in the cotton mill after I got out of school. Do you remember any experiences that happened at school while you were there? Well, I remember getting spanking in second grade. But I can't remember why, but I did. I can remember that. And I can remember when I was in the, a senior in high school, our two schools burned down. The old school burned, and and then they, they sent the seniors on up to Davenport, the old college. And they had our new school almost built back, ready to move in, and it, caught fire and burned. So when I graduated, it was outside of the gym down at the Hudson School. That's where we graduated in 1943. Um, did you have any sports at your school? Uh, the only sports I can remember was basketball. We had a good a girls basketball team. That I don't really remember any other sports. Wasn't like it is now, but I, I'm sure we didn't have football back then. Did you play basketball? No, anything? I didn't play any sports. Did you have any clubs at your school or anything like That's that, like Beta Club? My, no, Beta Club wasn't. There wasn't anything like that then. Um, 
Did you meet your husband there? Yes, that's where I met my husband. We were high school sweethearts. And, of course, we dated after high school. What was his name? Rome Prestwood. Where did y'all have y'all's wedding at? I was married at home with just a few people. My uncle married us. And uh, we went to live in the at Miller Hill. That's where he was from. And his parents lived there and owned right much land there. So we, when we first moved, had our own, our first house. It was a little house that belonged to his brother. And then we went over on the other side of the hill and built our first house. And uh, that's where we started our cabinet shop. My husband worked with, for his brother in the gas station, but he did the uh, cabinet on the side first because he was very interested in doing things with his hands. And he started out making uh, screen doors and window screens. And then later on it developed into started making a few cabinets and bookcases and it just built the business up and we had a good business. Um, what did you do at the cabinet shop? I finished cabinets. I had to do all the finishing from the sanding to the finishing the top finish and I had to mix a lot of different stains to get different colors people wanted. It was it was hard but it was a good job. Did you enjoy doing it? Yes I did. I enjoyed it very much. Did it's you kinda like working at home and that's that was good. Did you enjoy getting to spend all that time with your husband? Like did you get to see your husband a lot while you worked? Oh yes. Lots of times when he caught up with his work in one end of the shop, he'd come out and help me in the finishing end. And we had a lot of time together to talk and plan. After the, like, when you were still doing the cabinet shop, did was that the only job that he ever did, or is that the only thing that he ever did? Well, that was the last job he did. Of course, he had... Uh, when he first got out of service, well, he had to go in service. I didn't tell you that, did I? He was drafted, but by the time he got out of uh, training, he was a paratrooper. The war ended, but he had to go over and serve a year in Japan in the occupational troop. And But when he came out of service, he uh, went to school at, at Clevenger College in Hickory. And then... He did, uh, like I said, he was work, came out and he worked in the station with his brother, but then he started the cabinet shop and we gradually built it up. Did you have any kids? Yes, we had two children, a boy and a girl. Alice was the little girl and Wilson was a boy. And see, he was... He was born in 1951, and she was born in 1956, I guess. Anyway, there's five years difference between them. But they came along after we started the cabinet shop. Are they still around? No, I lost both of my children. I lost Wilson. He wasn't 47 years old. I lost him to a massive heart attack. And then my daughter's been gone two years. She was only 56 years old. She died from ovarian cancer. Did they have any kids? Yes, they had. Uh, Alice had two daughters, and Wilson had a son and a daughter. And? They, yeah, what did... Uh, what did their kids do, and like, what were their names? Well, uh, Wilson, like, like I said, he had the son and the daughter. The daughter is a registered nurse, and the son finished school at uh, Chapel Hill, and now he's employed at the Duke Hospital. And Alice's daughters, uh, Katie is the youngest one. She is a doctor's assistant. And uh, 
Emily, the oldest one, she works at hospice, Caldwell County Hospice. Um, would you like to tell us about the pictures behind you? Well, that's my children and grandchildren. This is a picture of Wilson and Alice. She was two years old and he was seven. And this is their picture over here too. She was 16 and he was 21. And this picture up here is uh, Emily. She's my oldest granddaughter. Did she have any kids? Yes, she, she has four children now. She had uh, Caitlin, Sierra, and Emma, and she has a stepdaughter, Haley. And uh, this is Amanda, that's Wilson's daughter. Like I said, she, I've already said that happens. She's mm -hmm. a, well, and uh, this is, and this is uh, Matthew, I told you what he did. Did they have any kids, Katie and Amanda? Well, Katie has a little son, Ryan, and Amanda had two daughters, Cassie and Lindsay Jo. And Wilson just got, or excuse me, Matt just got married recently. Thank you. And um, how did your husband pass away? He and our oldest granddaughter were out on the tractor one Saturday. She was driving it in it. It kind of got away from her, and he tried to stop it. And when he stepped up on the tractor, his foot slipped, and he slid under it, and the tractor ran over him and really uh, crushed his body. And he w was in Winston in the hospital a long time. They did surgery, and he did get to come home, but he wasn't home long till he a blood clot hit his lungs and killed him. That was in 1987. Do you remember anything about like his about the history like back then, JFK or? Oh yes, I remember the day that the President Kennedy died. I, my neighbor and I were over at the hospital. My husband had been it was in the hospital. He had had. Uh, appendicitis surgery, which was an odd thing when they finally found his appendix. It was up behind his liver, but they uh, managed to get it before it burst, and he he survived that, but he, that's where we were when the news came in that President Kennedy had been shot. It was a bad time for our nation. Do you remember anything else like that? Anything big like that, like World War Two? Oh, yes, I remember the when that started, when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, and uh, we lost a lot of people. I knew a few of the people that died over there, and I had a brother-in-law that was wounded very bad over there. And, uh, my husband had was drafted, but by the time he got through his basic training, he uh, the war had ended, but he was sent to uh, Japan for a year in the occupation forces. Um, do you remember anything else? Well, of course, everybody remembers 9-11, which has been recent. And uh, I can't remember right offhand, but a lot of things have happened through the years. Okay. Well, what, um, do you have any experiences, like, yourself personally, as you've grown up, bad or good? Well, I can think of one bad experience. <laughs> My doorbell rang one Friday morning. And I went to the door, and there was two black ladies standing out there and said they were out of gas and need to use the telephone. Well, I handed the telephone out to her, but she politely opened the door and came on in the house. 
and uh, she handed the phone to her, to another one, the other one, and uh, told her to call for help. And she said she had to use my bathroom. So she went in there, and by chance, I had left my billfold laying on the edge of the table there at the door. And uh, she came hurrying back through there and told that girl that uh, said they need to go. And of course, the one girl thanked me for using my telephone, but she never did get anybody. But they went out hurrying out, and I thought that was strange. But after they got out, I happened to notice that my billfold was gone. Of course, I, I called my granddaughter. She came over, and I called the police. They came. Of course, they couldn't do anything about it because they were long gone. But when the granddaughter came in, she parked in my carport, and she came in the back door, and there laid my billfold on the step. And, of course, the money was gone, but luckily no cards or anything, or my Social Security, nothing like that was gone. But it taught me not to open the door to strangers. If they ever come again, I'll tell them I will call somebody for them. That's good. That's the worst experience I could think of. I mean, as far as, you know, something that happened directly to me. Have, has any, can you remember any um, good experiences? Well, a lot of good things have happened along the way. I can't. Think. Of course, good things when my children were born. That was two of the best things that ever happened to me. And uh, just, well, I can't really remember right now, but I've had a lot of good things. All right. Well, had a good life. That's good. Well, what kind of trips have you been on? Can you think of, like, even if, did you and your husband ever go on any trips together? Well, we used to travel some. We always took our family to the beach every year, of course, and we traveled quite a bit up to the mountains. And that is mostly just local traveling. So, but, uh, we went up to Maryland to visit uh, my sister one time, and we made a trip up into Pennsylvania uh, Amish Company country and we really enjoyed that. Never have traveled an awful lot. What other trips have you went on with besides your husband? Like who have you went with? Well I've been on trips with my sisters and cousin. We made some trips with the uh, what is the tour company down? Can't even think of the name of the Christian Tours? Christian Tours, yeah. We made some trips different places like that and we went to the beach and and we went to the Ozarks and just different places like that. Can I went you? I see I went to uh, yeah, we went over in Virginia one time and to visited Natural Bridge and all that. But we've had I've had some good trips, good experiences. Can you remember any memories, like going to the beach or up in the mountains or something? Well, we always enjoyed going to the beach and watching the kids play and make sand castles. Anybody specific you've ever been to the beach that you remember? No, what? Is there anybody that you've been to the beach with that is specific, like a memory that you remember? Well, two years ago. I, uh, Katie and Ryan and I went because Granny and Poppy was supposed to go, but she was sick then and uh, she didn't get to go. But we went. We had a good time. And way back when children was little, we used to go with my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. We always had a good time with them cause they, and their children. Well, um, get, do you mind if I ask you about your religion and how you're a Christian and stuff? Yes, I'm a Christian. I was saved when I was 12 years old. My school teacher uh, 
talked to me at church one night, and I went up and accepted God into my heart, and I've had Him there ever since. And and that's just something I I marvel at people that don't have God with them, how they get along in this life, because I've been through so much in my life, losing all my family like I did, and I, I don't know what I'd have done without the grace of God and support of church members and family and all friends. What That's church a, do you go to? I go to Whitnell United Methodist. I taught Sunday school up there for about 40 years and then I like <clears throat> I've been in the choir for about 50 years. I'm still there. But uh, it's a little church. But it, we do a lot. We help a lot of people, and we have a wonderful pastor right now. Can you remember, like, the church that you went to when you was little with your parents? Yes, I went to. Uh, it was Sardis Baptist then, which turned into First Baptist since then. But it was Sardis Baptist little wooden church out there and sat on the, in the edge of the graveyard and it was another one that had to be heated by wood stoves. There wasn't any heat then, but I can remember the little Sunday school classes and I can remember we always did a uh, Christmas pageant and always had a big Christmas tree and, and it was a, I can remember a lot about my going to church when I was a child. Um... What about babysitting? I know you like you've babysat um, for a long time now. Yes, the first one I babysat. She's in her twenties now and got a child of her own. And but I have down through the years, I guess I've probably kept eight or ten children. Of course, I've kept my great grandchildren. How long do you think you've babysat like kids? How long? Yeah, for how long? Well, like I said, probably 18, 20 years, I think. Did you ever discipline them? Like, how did you discipline them if they were bad? Ooh, I had a big wooden spoon. I didn't even have to use it. I could just show it to them, and they would shape up and be good. Seldom ever I had to use that little spoon. I didn't use it much, but... Uh, they knew it was Gummy's spoon, and they kind of afraid of it. Do you have? Do you babysit now? Still? Yes, I'm still. Well, I have one great grandson that's in uh, kindergarten now. But of course, on holidays, I keep him, and then I keep little Emma, who is four years old. I keep her quite often because her mom works at night and has to sleep during the day. They're a joy. Do you have any hobbies that you like to do, like now, when you're not babysitting? Well, I guess my biggest hobby is reading. I love to read, and I love to work puzzles. And I don't, you can tell it's nothing strenuous, but I love to do both. <laughs> do you have any types of favorite books you like? Uh, yes, I like, uh, I like some mysteries. They don't get too involved, but I, I really like these uh, Christian romance books. And, and then my, uh, I have a niece that's been bringing by. She gets these series of. Uh, they're mostly mystery books, but they're they're really good. And I I read. She keeps me supplied in those. And like I said, I read every chance I get. Was that your favorite subject in um, school, reading? Not English? really. I think I liked spelling better, but I did like reading, though. And I like, we called it geography then. I don't know, you probably social studies now, but I like geography. I like to study about different places. Do you have any advice for us, us growing up? Well, my main advice is to get a good education. And keep yourself clean. Don't get carried away when these little fads come along, different things. Don't get carried away with that. And my greatest thing, greatest 
advice to anybody would to be to uh, take God into your heart and keep him there as you grow along because you'll never go wrong that way. If there was one thing that you could go back and change in your lifetime, what would it be? I think I would have tried to get a, a, a better education. I just got through high school, but I think I would have liked to have done a business course of some sort. I always thought I'd like to work in the office. All right. Well, thank you for letting us come and interview you. You're very welcome. And us taking up some of your time. Please listen to